Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 9th. I am Harlamos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar continued trading higher against most of the other major currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian session Wednesday. It lost ground only versus the euro while it was found virtually unchanged against the British pound. Now, at first glance, the strengthening of the US dollar suggests that the financial world continued trading in a risk-off manner. However, the rebound in the euro, the stabilization of the pound and the weakening of the Canadian dollar make the picture blurrier. Remember that the crisis in Ukraine has been negative for the euro and the pound, for the euro and the pound, but positive for the oil-linked um, loony. Now, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that major European indices traded mixed, with appetite softening uh, somewhat more during the U.S. Uh, session and even more in Asia today. At uh, at the time when investors seem to have decided uh, to take a breather from the massive selling of the previous days, uh, U.S. President Joe Biden announced a U.S. Uh, ban on, Russia, on Russian oil and other energy imports, and that's maybe why we saw some further selling yesterday and today in Asia. The European Union has yet to proceed with similar actions, perhaps due to its uh, large dependence on uh, Russian uh, gas and oil. Now, but, I, I, but if, the, if the crisis between Russia and Ukraine is still a reason for investors to sell equities, why did the euro gain this time around? Maybe it was lifted by eurozone sovereign um, bond yields, which, soared, which, uh, which rallied after reports that the European Union plans as soon as this week to issue bonds on a massive, uh, on a massive scale to massive energy, to to finance energy and uh, defense uh, spending. That said, with the ECB scheduled to announce its monetary policy decision tomorrow, we are very, la we are very reluctant to call, for a, uh, to call for more recovery in the common currency. Actually, despite inflation in the bloc expected to accelerate further, there are fears that the geopolitical developments in Ukraine could well harm Europe's uh, economic performance. Therefore, we expect officials to sound more dovish than they did uh, last time, perhaps hinting that a rate hike may be delayed and even pushed into next year. This could bring the euro back under renewed selling interest. Overall, we stick to our guns that the ongoing, that, that the ongoing geopolitical crisis will keep the path of least resistance for equities, the euro and the pound, to the downside, while at the same time, the US dollar and other safe havens like the yen are likely to continue receiving support. The commodity-linked currencies Aussie, Kiwi and Luni could rebound again uh, soon if energy and other commodity prices continue to skyrocket. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, tomorrow.